Hello everyone, today we are going over some leak code in C++ and today we will be focusing on maximum subarray. So before we get started, we are just going to stick with our usual uh, formulation. Right over here, input, we always need to ask ourselves four questions. What data structure slash algorithm slash technique we're going to use. What to do with the data, and then our output. Okay, so. To look over the question, given an integer array nums, find the subarray with the largest sum and return its sum. So here what we are doing, according to the problem as stated for the input and output relationship, is that we will be scanning our entire array and try to find the maximum uh, sum within a subarray to be able to start this. And I'm going to introduce you folks to an algorithm uh, that is actually pretty handy in this case called... Uh, uh, Conde's uh, algorithm in particular. And uh, in such algorithm, uh, in, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, in uh, Cadane's uh, algorithm, uh, we really are uh, just scanning throughout the rest of the subarray to find the maximum sum accordingly depending on various combinations. And it's a pretty efficient algorithm to be able to uh, solve such a problem at the same time. And so what I will be doing in this case is introduce you folks to a new type of algorithm called uh, Cadence algorithm. And in this one, what we will be doing is that we are gonna have a series of steps that will actually help us find our particular subarray. So, Cadence algorithm, we, the input that we have is a given array. And what we need to do is return the maximum sum of a sub array. What are we going to do with the data? We are going to find uh, we're going to scan through the array to find the maximum sum of a sub array. We should be able to create a sub array while we're scanning through um, while we're scanning through our given array right here okay. an array to start with we're going to use Cadane's algorithm and we will um, we're going to scan through the array and create a sub array to find the maximum sum of the sub array ultimately to find the maximum sum is what we are returning so to be able to start, we are first going to uh, initialize a current max number, and then was a we're going to initialize a global max number, which should be an index of the array next of the given array. be the initial so that it's much like in the case of having a variable and sending it to zero okay so to be able to start in current max is going to be equal to nums of zero as we were already given a vector at the top and then we're also going to have a global max as well numbers of zero and then what we will be doing is that we are one going to be scanning through array so we're going to have a for loop and i is going to be equal to and the way we construct this for loop is that it's going to be uh set at the first index not at the well uh, index at one not zero to be able to start because we are focusing on a subarray and the subarray needs to have at least two indices inside of it which is why we can start with one so oh, now signs plus plus as a standard for loop it's just that a subarray needs to have two indices to start which is why we start with one and then what we're going to do is that we're going to set a redeclaration of current max and we're going to uh, use um, this max type of method from the STL library for um, setting up our max current
Okay, so what we are doing is that within the subarray that we have, we are figuring out in particular what our max is going to be for every single index of i, and then adding up our current max, which will then be redeclared while we are going through inside this for loop, and then adding on an additional nums as well, ultimately to find a set max. And there will be a series of comparisons while we are going up the for loop to uh, compare exactly what our current max is going to be and then once we have figured out what our current max is we will then ultimately set our current max after its redeclaration to a global max which will then be global max current max and ultimately we will be returning our global max Here. So what we do is set a ration of current max to global max while we are going through the for loop. And so what will happen is that we will be making a series of comparisons throughout the rest of uh, our Cadane's algorithm to then be able to return the global max as well. And just to be able to clarify on this whole aspect, the reason why we do this is because the space complexity is pretty efficient. It's a linear for Cadane's algorithm and the space and the time complexity is going to be O of n where n refers to the size in a constant space for an array. So the more numbers that are available in set array the uh, longer the program is going to take in constant time, which is a pretty good time complexity uh, to begin. So let's run this up. I need to also, don't forget the semicolons, and also make sure you name everything accordingly. Yep. Okay. There we go, and it's pretty efficient to start with again. Uh, keeping everything in context, the time complexity for the following solution is going to be O of n, since it's revol revolving around the size, n represents the size of our given array, and it's going to vary based on time in constant space. And then space complexity is going to be linear of O of 1, because uh, we are not necessarily storing uh, any, any type of data structure, and we're using really just variables to start with. And so it's also relative to the um, size of the input, where uh, somewhere in the retrospective constant. But really, since we're not using a data structure, uh, it's going the um, space complexity is going to be O of one. So yeah, uh, thank you again for taking the time to be able to watch over this. If you found this helpful, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comment section as well. And as always, take care. Cheers. Bye.